Hey everybody, Jim Midnight Road Garage, and well, it's, uh, another week has passed, and I'm uh, going to work on the Camaro again. This time I have some more parts. Got a new dipstick, well, new dipstick, new dipstick tube, oil filter, and uh, most importantly, got a new starter right back there. So if you saw the last video, you know I did not hit my goal of uh, actually getting the car to crank. So maybe this week I'll be successful. Let's find out. First up is the uh, dick dip tube. The uh, kit that I got, uh, the oil pan kit that I got, this is the tube that it called for. And uh, fortunately, Amazon actually sells the original GM. You can see the part number right there. And this is a uh, GM AC Delco part. Uh, I was not able to get a GM uh, dipstick itself. This is a Dorman part. But uh, my old one, my old one, this is why I'm replacing You can see it got messed up uh, taking it out. Uh, this dipstick might be the same as this one, so I may use reuse the old one and save this one, either send it back or uh, save it. I'll probably just save it. I've got uh, two other LS engines that also, also don't have dipsticks, so uh, I may just save it for one of those. So the uh, dipstick tube is... The hole for the dipstick... <coughs> the hole for the uh, dipstick tube is... Right down there. It's kind of hard to see, but... Alright, let me put it in. So you can see the end of the dipstick tube has an O-ring that uh, needs to be seated into place. So what we're going to do is we're just going to stick this down in the dipstick tube hole. And then we're going to turn it until it, until it seats. I don't really know if I'm going to be able to do this one-handed or not. Okay, let's see, it's, it's in. And so what I'm going to do basically is, is this back and forth while pushing down. And that's how we're going to seat it. All right, dipstick tube is in. Uh, I just wanted to show you this. There is a bolt that should be installed here. Make sure you install it because as you can see, you're going down the road. You haven't put that bolt in and this thing's doing this. It is not going to last long. Okay, now onto the starter. You see, I removed the uh, old starter in the last video I showed you. I had taken these two, the two bolts out, and dropped it down so I could get to it. And uh, you can see what happened. It's so rusty that it, um, when I went to loosen up that nut, it just snapped right off. So uh, hopefully that doesn't happen on the new one. It's not not rusty at all. It's brand new. Uh, they pretty much look the same, so I'm going to take this off. It just pops off, pop it onto here, and install it back up in there. Uh, it did come with new bolts as well, so I'll be using the new starter bolts. Okay, our new starter is installed. Uh, now I, I feel like we're actually getting somewhere. Let's see if we can hook up a battery and get this guy to crank. Well, we got the starter in. Let me just uh, finish hooking up a battery. And then we'll see whether or not... This thing cranks. Well, it's been a few years since that engine ran. It was in a 2500 Chevy pickup that I had, and I pulled it out to do this LS swap. And then life kind of got in the way, and then the shop that I I uh, was renting, I got rid of. I bought this place, moved everything here, and this has just kind of been sitting, waiting for me to get back to it. So uh, here goes nothing. Uh, let's see if it cranks. It's not going to start. But let's see if it cranks. That's awesome. It's been a long, long time since I've heard that engine crank. So, good day here at Midnight Road Garage. Like, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later.